Right, uh, so welcome to our session around um, creating a continuous learning culture. I'm Liz Penning, or oh, what well, actually, Liz War. Don't tell my husband. Um, I got married two and a half years ago, but I still haven't changed my name. Admin is the worst. Um, so I'm the partner skills lead for Microsoft UK. And effectively what my role is, is to make sure that we've got all the right resources, all the, the right strategies to help our partners forge their own continuous learning culture. So that might be um, things like learning online or face-to-face -face events, uh, hands-on labs, working through um, indirect providers like Grey Matter to help enable them to help yourselves. Um, so there's a lot of uh, work that goes in from across the business. It's very much a team effort as well. Um, so we work with a lot of the technical teams, uh, someone like Guy. Um, we also work with um, the business leaders as well to understand what soft skills might be available and needed. So we really set that strategy on how we drive um, that continuous learning culture. And what we've done as well is uh, recently introduced the need for new talent. Um, so what I'll do is I'll talk to you a bit about what we've um, recently been working on and how you can start thinking differently maybe around uh, pulling in new people into your business but also uh, creating a, a learning culture within your business at the moment. And then I've got Guy coming up to talk to you about what he's been doing with Grey Matter directly and how they've really started to embrace learning internally themselves. And so I'm sure you've probably seen all of the information that we have around the Gartner research on skills and the, actually more so the gap that we have around skills. And what we find when we're talking to our partners, and actually it's the number one thing, I've been at Microsoft nine years now and I've always worked with partner and it's always the thing that partners talk to me is around the lack of talent and the fact that they can't recruit quick enough, they have so many people that they want to fulfill in vacancies so that they can go faster. And to be honest with you, we're in exactly the same boat. Um, we obviously needed to um, hire for all of our CSU, which is an absolute mean feat in itself, 250 new people. And the unfortunate um, cycle of that is some of those people came from our partners. And we don't want that to happen, and we want to help us all try and find that new talent and quickly get there. And so also the other thing is um, when new people are coming into the business, the the number one thing that they actually look at is the career development and those new learning opportunities. Gone are the days that people are really looking at pay as a, a real incentive to stay and also in terms of the benefits as well. The number one benefit is actually how are you helping that person to grow themselves. So as I'm sure you're aware of uh, what our mission statement is as Microsoft. But actually, it's not just an organization that we want to empower. We do actually want to empower people. So whether you work in one of our customers, our partners, or even if you're just uh, somebody that just works for themselves, we want to make sure that the skills are available to everybody so that you can decide your kind of future as to where you go. So what we've launched recently is something called the Partner Skills Initiative. And we effectively wanted to make sure that all of those great resources that we do build are housed in one place just to make it easy because I know that actually that's one of the things that we get feedback on is everything is everywhere. Uh, we make things quite complex and it is quite difficult to signpost yourselves around some of our websites. And so we're trying to make that in a consolidated approach and a bit more of a journey because that's what learning is all about is a continuous kind of infinity learning journey if you will. And what we've done is we've split it out into three um, very simple ways that you can start thinking about what's required in your business, how you go through digital transformation, or even a business transformation, the type of skills that, and best practices that you can take on board, and then also growing your teams as well, whether that be taking on new people or whether it's actually growing the talent that you have in your business already. So jumping straight into the assess piece, what we've created, um, we used to call it the Partner Transformational Index, or the PTI, because we love an acronym at Microsoft. And apologies, if I do say any acronyms, please do ask me what they are if you don't know. Um, I will try and uh, make sure I'm out of Microsoft speak. But we see it as the PTI, or the Partner Transformational Index. And what we've actually evolved this into is the PTA, which is the Partner Transformational Assessment. And it's exactly what it says on the tin. It is a business assessment to understand how you're going through your business transformation. 
there are no right or wrong answers to this either. It's actually just benchmarking you as to where you want to aspire to be. So if you decide that actually there's a particular area of business that you don't want to get into, that's not a bad thing. That's completely your choice. But it helps guide you into what your recommendations and best practices would be next. And this is um, what the outcome of that PTA or PTI may look like. So it kind of recognised the quadrant area there. And it's really to identify where you are today and where you want to be and where are those different areas or the gaps that you want to go and fulfil. And this isn't something, and again, we want to kind of forage that continuous learning um, culture and, and thinking about our business to keep on evolving, really. It's not something that you just do, do a piece of work and that's it, you're done. You continue to review where you are and assess and benchmark yourself. So we would say probably do this once every quarter if you're a particularly agile business or once every six months depending on what your goals are and your um, business outcomes are and the achievements that you aspire to. Then the second piece is a, a very important part about this is the learning the skills. And so what we've done is we've actually created a lot of extra partner training resources. Now, what I will say about the Partner Skills Initiative today is it's very much in terms of this isn't the end goal. We are absolutely in evolution as you are. So the one thing I would say as Partner Skills Lead for the UK is provide me with feedback around how you're getting on. What do you want to see more of? What do you want to see less of? You know, I'm really open to making sure that we're providing something for our partners. But what we started out with, and we, you may have seen our um, Microsoft Learn website, which is a learning portal, which is job role related. And what we've done with our partner training sites, we've done exactly the same thing. So we've aligned it into job role specific areas and their job role aligned learning paths. So you could pick that you might be a sales person and there'll be particular roles that come up or particular learning opportunities, particularly online, and you can go through those journeys and become a, an excellent seller in Surface or maybe in Microsoft 365. And again, Microsoft Learn does exactly the same thing. And I'm hoping we're going to pull that into the back end so it's a really nice um, joined up approach. Uh, it currently runs off Partner Training University, which you might be um, aware of already today. Uh, as I said, we'll evolve that into Microsoft Learn. We'll hopefully build the AI Business School into this so everything's in one place. And as part of my role, and uh, Jamie, who's in the room, who's my apprentice in the team, we'll be building in-person events, which we do anyway, but we'll also be working with Grey Matter on how to make sure that they're building uh, great events as well for their partners. So it's very much as you're coming to our event, we will absolutely try and share as much content as we can with you and turn that into a train the trainer so that maybe if you want to go and train your um, teams as well or you have particular people who are great at delivering that best practice, then they can do so. Equally, <coughs> someone like a Grey Matter, we will help them and support them in delivering those types of sessions. So I know Guy, for instance, does some fantastic work around Azure fundamentals and some other areas as well, um, particularly around sales. We also have some third party providers. So a part of this and what we're trying to land in the UK is learning concierge. So there will be lots of opportunities for you to work with other third party um, providers, maybe on some soft skills, perhaps some sales training around Azure. They might have a, a boot camp on how to certify yourselves in particular areas, maybe data platform or whatever. And so we're trying to make sure, that, again, this is all in one place. I've just had the go ahead to um, build a UK site with all of this information on, which I'm very happy about. And we're also going to be driving more virtual live events as well, so more webinars and more clinics so that people can drop in, ask a question, or make sure that they're learning, but in bite-sized chunks, because I know that we change things so rapidly, it's really difficult to keep up. So we'll try and do as much as we can and also work with Grey Matter to make sure that there's things provided to you too. And then finally, the uh, final piece of this is growing and it's continuously evolving. So actually I think uh, grow, it's uh, grow slash evolve because we will continue to evolve the content that we have. We'll continue to build new um, opportunities for you to learn and we'll also continue to help you grow your talent as well. And so a part of that is we've launched our talent playbook, or as Corp say, it's the Recruit, Hire, Onboard and Retain Talent Playbook, but I'm just calling it the Talent Playbook. 
Um, because actually this is, and it's a really good resource actually, I'm not someone that reads books back to back in terms of um, you know, things that I may find a bit uninteresting occasionally, but I'm more of a scanner. But actually I read this cover to cover and it was a really good resource for you to really identify how to understand how to attract new talent, how to um, help retain the talent that you already have in terms of learning opportunities, but also what's the right culture to build. Equally, if someone has an aspiration to do a different type of role, how do you help them get to that point? How do you get to that end goal? And there's also some um, top tips around particular job role specs that are available that you can actually copy and paste and post online if you don't have time um, to do it yourself. So if you're putting it onto LinkedIn, and there's also uh, other areas there that you can look at in terms of the other programs of um, partnering up with local universities or colleges as well for that younger generation too. So we've just um, provided a bit of an idea here around how the job roles particularly have changed within our partners' organisations, but also ours. So for instance, you know, when you're looking at maybe data analyst, it could be that you're turning into more of a data scientist now and you'll see some of these changes happen. And with developer, actually there's lots of different areas you can go. You could be a cloud architect, you could be a software developer, AI developer now. So there's lots of different areas that are changing from where we used to see those particular job roles and where you can see that they're crossing into other new skills but also new roles that are um, becoming available. So in terms of this slide particularly, we just pointed out a few areas around if you are looking to be a cloud administrator or you're looking to hire people within the business with that type of job role or those skills required, it's actually very difficult to go out to the market and say, right, I want a cloud administrator or I want a cloud developer, when actually these roles haven't been around really that long. And so therefore, within the talent playbook, what we've um, built out for you is the different areas of where people may have done def different job roles before or had different skill sets before and then they turn into this job role that you aspire them to have. And so for instance with a cloud administrator they may have been an IT administrator before, they may have been a network engineer before and so what are the skills that they probably had before, so a bit of Cisco or a bit of uh, MCSA or MCSE Let's look at what their learning path could be to turn them into that cloud administrator if they're currently in your business or if you're hiring externally, what's that IT administrator, what are the skills that they have, maybe they're a great problem solver. Okay, let's look at what else we can build out with them. And again, just some of these career paths here that they seem to be simplifying actually in terms of you know, all these large job roles that, I mean, Microsoft still have quite a few of them. Um, which even job roles are now becoming acronyms. Like mine, I'm a PCMME, everybody. PCMME. Uh, which is a partner channel marketing manager for enablement. So, part skills lead. <laughs> so, these roles are actually simplifying, which is great to see actually, because then we can really understand that even though you may be a solution architect, you have lots of diverse and different perspectives that you're bringing into that role. And so, there, there may be different gaps and elements that you need to learn but it means that it's inclusive to a wider range of people to be able to do that job. And I think that's a really important area. So then moving um, over to our apprenticeship program. So I lead our external uh, apprenticeship program for our partners and customers. And what we did about nine years ago now is we created a program where we would make sure that we can help our partners take in new younger talent. And not necessarily younger now because the apprenticeship levy um, is obviously helping with some of the larger businesses with that, such as Microsoft. Um, but what I thought I'd do is take you through a couple of the areas around what the Microsoft Apprenticeship Program is and then how you could <coughs> maybe identify whether this is an opportunity for you. So we'll take you through, obviously, why apprenticeships are important. I mean, does anyone have an apprentice in their business at the moment? Great. And is, has it been really important for you as a, as a new way to build new talent? Yeah. And what sort of apprentice have you had? <laughs> and that too. Yeah. And what sort of apprentice do you have? Brilliant. And how long have they been? Eight months, great. 
That's good to hear, and it's, it's great to hear that we're, you know, how did you find that apprentice? Are you um, partnering with local universities or colleges? No, I don't know. Oh, okay, through HR. Else, yeah. Okay, great, <laughs> that's all right, that's okay. Um, so what we'll do is we'll talk to you about what the Microsoft Apprenticeship Programme is, and then also around how and, you know, maybe why you should hire, and, and this gentleman here has just brought up a really good point, is actually the government pay for that training particularly if you're um, an organisation who has less than 50 seats, then the whole training for that apprentice aged from 16 to 19 years of age is free. Um, so that's something that is a really great incentive. And the training um, through our providers is a very high quality. We do set the bar very high, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. So I won't um, read through all of this for you, and I will share these slides and make them available to you. Um, but really, we do have a digital skills gap, and it's something that is very prevalent in the UK. And particularly, I'm not going to say the B word because I get told off, but particularly as uncertain times are coming, we want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to build our own talent in our own you know, organisations, our own country, and also making sure that it's as diverse as possible as well. And so it's great for the young people coming up through whichever um, background that they come from. And that's the one thing that I really like about apprenticeships. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, your background situation. If you really want to aspire to get into a good job role and you want to work hard, then this is the greatest way for you to do so. And again, equally, there is opportunities for those people that want to go through university, but maybe they want to, they come out with their degree, they need a bit of experience, and there's a master's degree apprenticeship that they can go through. So it all depends on where you're coming from. Equally, if there is an organisation who has a levy like Microsoft, you could be a 45-year-old apprentice, and that won't stop you, because all cloud technology is relatively new, so you wouldn't have learnt that in university um, before, so it's something that you can you can do too. So our apprenticeship program, how it works, is we work with um, Scottish and English approved apprenticeship providers, and we will work with them on. So they need to make sure that they are approved by government. The other thing that they need to do is they need to become a Microsoft Learning Provider. So that means they get access to all of our Microsoft official content so they can deliver it back to that apprentice. So that could be online learning, and that will be the 20% off the job learning that they have to do. And a part of that will be uh, maybe face-to-face -face learning to then achieve certifications. So how we work with those providers is we identify with our partners and our customers the types of job roles that they will require and we look at what the standards are available and what, what are the barest minimum that those standards require that apprentice to learn and then we weave the Microsoft content throughout that. And so what we have here is obviously the training costs are, are completely subsidised in some cases or if um, you're an organisation over 50 seats and not paying a levy then 90% is still paid by the government so I think that's a pretty good deal. And in terms of, um, I mean I've hired Jamie myself who is a, a fantastic apprentice and already you know we've gone through our, um, your standard with the uh, events assistant so any of the events that we're creating we've highlighted the areas that we can really excel but then equally across I know that there's going to be some of those areas in the standard that we can't complete together so we've worked with some of the other areas of the business and some other people that create events and so Jamie's going to be shadowing some of those teams and also in terms of um, some other extracurricular projects, we've set out a really good timeline of particular projects that are required and when they're required to be delivered. And we catch up on a regular occasion just to check in and see how we're getting on. I think we're doing a good job so far. And so there's lots of obviously big challenges that you have within your business around talent. And this is probably the number one area that you can overcome in terms of new talent. And I mean, the lead time in terms of landing an apprentice for them to be in front of a customer, you need to be realistic in terms of how much you're able to then coach that person. But at the same time, because they're learning on the job and they're learning off the job, actually the learning potential is actually really quite fast paced. And so most of our apprentice, apprenticeships are actually 18 months, and by then you have a very competent apprentice or you have a very competent worker by the end of that time. So in terms of looking at new talent, then that's something that we definitely suggest. 
and also in terms of having um, more than one apprentice land in your business. Now, if you can imagine, you know, you are 18 years of age and you've been landed into an organisation on your own and you're, you're very different in terms of age and perspectives from other people in the business, it's unlikely that the apprentice will necessarily feel motivated. So some of the tips that we suggest is take a couple of apprentices or a couple of younger people earlier in, in career and have them mentor each other and buddy with each other. So then it doesn't mean that you're always looking after that particular person and you've got different people from across the business helping out because that also provides them with different perspectives and different best practices on how to work in your business as well. And in terms of helping your organisation grow, this is something that I've found. So I aspire to be a manager one day. And so for me, it's really helping with my personal development and coaching, making sure I'm setting the right expectations, but also am I being a good support and helping Jamie, for instance, understand where her career aspirations are. And so in terms of you know, helping your business grow, you're not only helping that apprentice grow, but you're also helping maybe the next team leader or the next manager of tomorrow think about what their career aspects are as well. And also it means that, as we said before, the training costs are subsidised and you are going to be working with qualified learning providers who we make, we make them jump through quite a lot of hoops just to make you aware. So they have Microsoft certified trainers, they make sure, so they tend to have like a module approach and within that module you'll have somebody who is aligned to that apprentice who will then help them through the apprenticeship. They'll have online learning that they need to deliver. There's sometimes there's a dissertation type essay that they have to complete at the end of that module, but also there's um, at the end of it, which is the endpoint assessment, there's quite a rigorous interview process that that apprentice then has to go through to show the skills that they've learned, but also what they've learned about your business. So just to be really clear on actually who pays for the apprentice, in terms of organisations, as I said, from zero to 50, 50 people within the business, the training is free of charge. Obviously, there is a salary still to pay that apprentice, as well as any um, expenses, which are, are very uh, minimal. And in terms of um, the employers that are over 50%, that they do pay 90%, uh, uh, the government pay 90% of that training as well through the uh, apprenticeship provider. And so um, I know that a few of you probably won't be levy payers um, today, but if you do obviously grow your organisation and there is a PAYE bill of over three million, then there will be a levy um, which is attached to that. And you can actually rebate that funding back and pay for an apprentice that way. So there's different areas and I think if you want to go and find out more, there's lots of information on the government website around apprenticeships. So this is just an idea around what our programme roadmap looks like. Um, so what we've done is we've pulled out on the right hand side some job roles that are typical within our partner organisation, our customers organisation, but equally to that our providers are really flexible. So if you come up to them and say, well actually I do want a cloud systems admin, but I want them to learn about Microsoft 365 as well as Azure, then that's absolutely fine, they can wrap that around within the programme. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of those learnings that are required and it's completely up to you whether they um, do particular um, extra certifications, maybe some digital certifications through Microsoft Learn or whether it's through edX, whatever that might be. Um, but actually in terms of the standard itself, as long as that's completed as the bare minimum, anything you want over the and above you can work with the provider on. But we've just set these out as clear areas. So the middle blocks are actually the standards that are available today. There's organisations continuously trailblazing the government and lobbying them to make sure that they're uh, kept up to date on a regular basis. It does take some time to push through, hence why we've created um, quite a lot of extra pieces on top of the standards that are available today. Um, and then you can see on the bottom there, you've got the different levels of apprenticeship. So you've got level three to level four, and then level four to six is degree apprenticeship and then level six to seven is master's degree apprenticeship. So we're hope, hoping to uh, have some great announcements around AI um, coming in May and June if you're interested. I'm not telling you any more, by the way. So over to Guy Thank and his you. case study on grey matter. Thanks Liz. Uh, I think it's really interesting that both Liz um, uh, and also um, uh, Lee 
uh, in this morning's keynote both touched on this skills gap that we have in the, the market at the moment. Um, it's, it's a big challenge for everyone, for Microsoft included. Um, you know, put your hand up if you have particular problems finding good people uh, for your business. It, it's incredibly hard, not only attracting those people, but also retaining those people as well. Um, and so as my, in, in my role as the partner technology strategist uh, at Microsoft, aligned to Grey Matter, one of my uh, key roles really is to help enable our partners technically to make sure that those teams are technically able um, and to help them to serve uh, the ISVs like yourselves. Now I've been working with Grey Matter for around about a year now, just over a year, and one of the things that we started uh, very early on actually was a, a learning plan for their technical team. And as Matt mentioned in his keynote, Matt Whitten, he said that uh, you know originally they were you know pu purely a resale uh, partner, and then they started this cloud know-how team. Um, that started a few years ago, and they're now up to twelve people uh, within that team. And you know I'm I'm incredibly proud to work with some of these people who are incredibly technically able, uh, and the uh, fantastic achievement that they made together in February was actually. Um, of the 12 people in their team, they managed to get eight Azure certifications just in one single month in February. Um, and so the seven people, eight certifications across those people, and it really just goes to show how far Grey Matter have come in such a short space of time. And I think really it makes Grey Matter um, more attractive for their ISVs, <laughs> Uh, to buy from, and not only that, but it also makes them a more attractive company to go and work for. You know, if I was uh, looking, certainly around the southwest or in Devon, for a technology job, you know, this is something which really attracts me. You know, this is the the type of company that that tech uh, technologists want to work for. And so I thought I'd highlight this uh, as a case study uh, and just talk to you about some of the learnings that we've taken uh, from the time that we've. Uh, worked with Tristan and his team in the cloud know-how team uh, and really just replay back some of the learnings we've taken to share with you so that you can then build your own learning plan uh, and uh, hopefully have the same level of success as Grave Matter. So the first step on, on that journey really uh, is before you do anything is to define success. You know, what, what do you want to get out of this learning plan? What do you want to achieve? Uh, what is the overarching uh, reason for doing this? And you know, my recommendation is don't just get stuck in and, and start doing it. Have a discussion with your team, your wider stakeholders, and understand where does this fit in to your, you know, your company culture, to your ethos, um, to your values, and you know, why are you doing this? What, what is it? Is it to uh, achieve? Uh, is it to empower your employees? Is it to win more business? What's the ultimate aim that you want to do? Um, out of this. <clears throat> and then once you've understood why you're doing it, then you can put together a plan. Now, uh, you know, if you don't know where to start, then you can start with a template and both Microsoft and Grey Matter will be able to help you to get up to speed with a template. Um, but I would say don't overthink it too much. Don't, you know, stress too much about the, the details. Um, in, in my experience, um, simple is, is often best, and so get started with a simple template, track who's in your team, what the outcome is for each person, uh, and then make sure you revisit that plan on a regular basis. And also share that plan as well. Share it with your colleagues, share it with your stakeholders, both internal and external. Um, Share it with your customers. You know, if your customer, if you want to bring your customers in on, on this journey, find out what skills they want from your team and make sure that you're building that into your plan. <clears throat> and then the next step really is to involve HR. And this is something which I think we sometimes overlook within, within partners uh, and within the, the technical teams because very often these plans are put together by you know, the technical team, the support team, the development team in a silo separate from the other functions of the business. But actually, in my experience, the 
plans have had greatest success when they've brought in someone from HR because they can give the plan additional context in terms of you know hiring, in terms of retention, in terms of rewards. You know, in some cases we have partners who uh, who reward their staff for passing exams, um, and you know that's part of their compensation for uh, and motivation for working at that company. And it also um, adds the element of career progression uh, as well. So at Grey Matter, I know that they set the, the bar for certain roles within the company based on competencies and achievements that the, those individuals have set out. So um, I think it also makes it a, a, a much fairer workspace where you're awarding jobs based on talent rather than uh, other factors that, that might not necessarily be um, seen as being fair. Uh, and actually, as Liz mentioned, one of my favourite resources to show the HR team is the the talent playbook because you know they also need to kind of understand from the Microsoft partner side of things and uh, the talent playbook. I think talks their language. It really does um, explain why it's so important to to embrace uh, this type of uh, activity within the business. So the next step is to set SMART goals. Um, when, I was a, when I was a partner, this is probably something that I struggle with the most. And if you don't set uh, SMART goals, then it's very difficult to actually measure how successful you've been and also uh, hard to know how far through, through the journey you are. Um, so SMART is an acronym. It stands for specific, measurable, agreed upon, realistic and time-bound uh, goals and so something that I very often see is partners who make a commitment to a certain target or a certain goal but they don't set a deadline and that means that ultimately there's no end point there's no check-in dates there's no how, how things going it just kind of goes on forever without any actual um, achievement being made and also that that the A, agreed upon, you've got to get buy-in from, from the team, from the individual, and from the senior stakeholders as well, because um, you know, if you don't have that agreement, then very often the people aren't motivated to actually to do that. Um, and, and the great thing, once you've set these goals, it's so, it's so easy then to just regularly check in. And actually, I, I can't take well, I can, I can take very, very little credit for the achievement that Grave Matter had done. It's been mostly Tristan and his team who kept on top of it. The extent of my input really was just checking in with them once every couple of months just to see how things were going. Was there anything I could do to help? Uh, was there anything I could do to unblock? Uh, and also just to help them with the, uh, the changes that we'd made recently into our um, learning program. So having those SMART goals is essential. Number five on my list is, is maximizing your learning resources. Um, Microsoft make available a huge amount of, uh, of, of learning resources from Microsoft Learn, like Liz mentioned this morning, to our third party providers, um, our uh, authorized learning providers who um, create a huge amount of content <coughs> for the ecosystem. Um, Grey Matter, for example, utilized their plural site subscriptions. Um, these are a third party uh, on-demand streaming subscription service that, that Grey Matter have paid for, but that, that investment in those learning resources really helped them to accelerate um, their plan and really uh, achieve those goals sooner than they would have otherwise done. And when I think about learning resources, it's not just the, the Microsoft learning content and the learning providers, but there are also other things that you have access to as well as part of your benefits. <coughs> Um, things like internal use rights, um, Visual Studio subscriptions with Azure Credit. Uh, we have demos.microsoft.com. Um, so when I was doing my MS 900 Microsoft 365 Fundamentals exam, we, we actually didn't have very much content available either directly from Microsoft or through third parties. So a lot of the, uh, the sort of self-education I did was using a, a demos.microsoft.com tenant, which is available to all of our partners. Um, and you can set up a Microsoft 365 tenant uh, with um, demo data in there and use that as a, a test bed for, for your learning. Now, I know it's not an official 
learning resource, but think creatively when you're looking at all the resources that you have in your team. Um, and remember that actually your greatest resource is your people and the people who've already been through some of these exams can help mentor and coach some of the junior people on that team as well. The next thing, I think this is really important, again, this is ownership at every single level. Um, Grey Matter really were uh, fantastic when it came to ownership because uh, not only did they feel um, empowered as individuals to take ownership of their own personal development, but they had great coaching and mentorship from their manager, Tristan, in this journey. Uh, so he really kept on top of uh, what was happening across the entire team, providing individual support when needed, but actually just making sure that the team as a whole were going in the right direction. And then there's ownership um, above that, which is at the sort of senior stakeholder level. So you're talking about Matt and Andrew King, who you know really um, give the company and give the team space to be able to do this and carve out the time within their day to make sure that they have the chance to learn. And then, you know, I, I was an owner at a certain degree as well because, you know, I was invested in making this plan a success even though I was actually technically part of the Grey Matter team. And so bring your vendors in on this journey as well. Make sure that they have some level of ownership in that plan. And then the final thing really is to celebrate success. You know, when you've made those fantastic achievements, when you've got, you know, your team through their exams, when you have the, your, your um, apprentices passing their first exam, you know, really celebrate those milestones. Um, celebrate as a team. Um, I think Grey Matter took out their, their guys for a, a slap up meal after they, they achieved that success but also celebrate individually as well. And you know, my favorite uh, sort of self-promotion and celebration thing is sharing the Acclaim badge after you've achieved your exam. We unlock the, the sort of digital badge that allows you to share that with your social network. Um, and I think that's a great way also to, to sort of celebrate success too. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of wrap up this section in terms of the case study just to give you a summary of some of the key steps that, that we've pulled out of the, the case study we've had with Grave Matter um, to help you to build your own learning plan. Uh, and remember that you know, even if you're just a, a one-man band, if you're a, a single person, a single developer, uh, you can still build your own uh, learning plan, your personal learning plan, tie it to your, your business success uh, and do that. So, so this is something I would recommend to partners of every size, um, you know, from the small business all the way to the enterprise. So thank you very much for listening to that. I'm going to hand back to Liz just to wrap up and give us a quick summary of the uh, key points and then we'll open up to Q&A. Then there is um, never a Microsoft presentation that goes by without some go-do's or some calls to action. So I'm going to go set you some homework. Um, one of them is, is I've actually written a blog. And as I said earlier about scanning things and reading things to the entirety. So I have two options for you on the blog. You can either read everything that I've written and you find the links within that. Or I've actually put them at the bottom so that if you're a scanner like me, then you've got access to those resources. There's me being inclusive as possible. Um, and also in terms of uh, you know, your next steps is really start working with your account manager at Grey Matter to understand how you can assess together so that um, PTA tool or the partner, uh, partner transformational um, assessment, you can actually do that as a self-serve. So you can do that yourselves. We don't get access to that information so we don't see what your business is doing but it's actually a, a report you can pull out yourselves and then take that back to your Grey Matter account manager or work with them to define you know, what those recommendations look like. Work with them with the resources that they have but also we have in, in terms of what that learning plan could look like for you. And then in terms of um, the grow pieces, review that talent playbook, hand it over to your HR team or your L&D team if you have one, and look at you know, what are the different ways that you can hire in the new talent that you want from you know, maybe university, college, apprenticeships, and also how do you help build the talent within your business that you have today. And then finally, go, go and think about how you can hire an apprentice, or maybe two, or 
could be five. I don't know, however many you want. Um, so that is definitely something that I think I've seen within some of our partner businesses and it's, it's become a really great way for them to grow. Um, just as a, a quick case study, Rizal, um, who are based in Stafford, they actually they, they don't have a lot of access to people um, within who have IT or digital um, careers already. So uh, I think about two thirds of their business are actually uh, apprentices or ex-apprentices. And you can tell because when you rock up to their um, office, you can see all the Mercedes A-classes just parked outside the front um, of those that apprentices that may still live at home but um, can pay for their car on a monthly basis. Um, so I mean, they're doing a great job um, with their own um, teams as well. So if you ever want to kind of reach out to those guys, and I know Grey Matter take on some apprentices as well, um, just get best practices from other people around what they've been doing, as well as the providers you can work with as well. Uh, I'm around for any questions anyway, but thank you. And does anyone have any questions right now? I think the first thing is you've um, taken that initiative to empower your team to take any time at all. Um, there's quite a few partners that probably don't even work on that best practice. So, I mean, and actually quite a lot of partners probably don't, because it's very difficult. You've got people off the bench, and I completely understand that. Um, but equally, if we're not providing them some time or that empowerment to take a bit of time to sh you know, see some best practice from a thought leader that they really like or watch a TED talk or... Because actually, if you think about it, every day we're probably learning something new, but we haven't really looked at it as learning. And so, I mean, it's... Some people tend to be like, on social media, meetings, sharing stuff. Yeah. Some people do that, but especially with developers, it's not something that they will do as much. Mm. I mean, what we've started doing in terms of uh, my team, because as you can imagine, like Microsoft is massive, and so there's lots of different best practices around how individuals learn or how particular people may learn. So me, um, myself, I take on, I mean, there's so many opportunities of learning at Microsoft. You can do this course, you can do this mock or MOOC or this or that. And um, I didn't go to university, so I kind of have this mentality where I'm trying to keep up with those very intelligent people that may have done before. So that's how I'm thinking about learning, that I want to jump on. I want to continuously make sure that I have something booked or I have something to look forward to, or whether it's online learning or whatever. But what we do at Microsoft is we've launched many types of initiatives. Um, so we have mandatory training that is required throughout the year anyway and that is something that you have to do and then we have and then it kind of you kind of say you have to learn but it's you know things like compliance and security within your business if you don't force people to do so and they don't sign their name against it and something goes wrong then you understand why we're doing it and then the second piece is we've launched tech skills initiative which is actually based off microsoft learn and we're saying, right, well, if you are more of a business user, then do the business value of Microsoft Azure or M365 or Dynamics um, type courses. But actually, if you're a technical person, why have you not maybe achieved your certification? Why do you not want to help better yourself? And you know, so I know that you've um, done your Azure fundamentals. Have you done anything else lately? M365 as well? Yeah, so all of the tech guys are starting to achieve their own certs. But within our um, partner business team, we also took uh, on upon ourselves to create a catalog of learning resources and tips and tricks as well. So, you know, if you want to be a mentor and you want to help mentor some other people in your team, or whether you, you need a mentor, how would you go about finding one? So it's around career development, learning opportunities. 
And once, uh, one day, one Friday every four weeks, we have as learning time in the diary. And so it's just a reminder, you don't have to learn then because we're all productive at different times. For instance, I don't learn in the morning because I know that's my email time and that's when I'm better productive there. But actually later on in the afternoon is when I'm, I switch on, I learn and I know I'm going to do so. But if it's in your diary, then people will see that, okay, if they don't respond to me straight away, they're probably learning or if they're on do not disturb or you know, whatever that might be, they're probably doing some of their own learning. Um, because Microsoft are, and actually our Joe Macri and the team are very conscious that they don't want us learning outside of hours when they've suggested it as an opportunity to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and if they want to, then that's absolutely fine. Yeah. We, the Microsoft Pond I used to work for, we, we absolutely built it into our week. So we actually had Friday afternoons every week, we would take the technical team um, and have an hour of dedicated training where we would train ourselves. We would um, have a set schedule of um, sessions which were delivered internally by colleagues. Um, and we were unapologetic to customers who phoned up during that hour and you know, they got through to one of the managers. That manager would say, I'm very sorry, the technical team are, are doing their uh, weekly training session. Uh, can we get them to call you back afterwards? And actually, you know, we originally thought that our customers would be terrified by this and they would want, they would demand people to come out of that training session. But actually what we found was that customers loved it. They wanted that team to be trained. They wanted them to be knowledgeable. So in a lot of cases, they were happy to wait for, for an hour or two um, until we'd actually... Yeah, so now, yep, <laughs> yep. on the network guys saying with a client, um, I'm at Microsoft Day today, and it's like, that's fine, I'll just grab you at lunch. Yeah. Yep. We thought closing the, the part of the UK office so people would mind, they don't. No. And other things that we've done that work really well are things like lunch and learn. Mm -hmm. So we'll obviously, you know, have these little brown paper bags. It's very much going like going back to school, actually. <laughs> it was quite, you know, you get your sandwich and you get your piece of fruit. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you're also learning at the same time and so then actually you're, you're doing it within your lunch break and it's not all the time and it's not every day or it's a pizza and learn or something like that so it's, it's a nice community feel. Equally people aren't going to learn the same thing because as you see these job roles and particularly if you look at our Azure platform there's so much stuff to learn within that. It'll only actually be one or two people that are going off to learn different things at different times as well. And so it's a, maybe a case that you stagnate it so that you've got people covering if you need to equally. Am I in into lunch? Oh, I don't know. Any more questions? <laughs> no. we'll I was kidding. We'll be around. For those who are going to the Women in Technology session after you've grabbed a bite to eat, that's going to be in the main keynote area. So please feel free to join that. Um, thank you very much for your time. And uh, enjoy your lunch.